G'day again everyone. Uh, today we're going to be doing a bit of comp practice. Got another comp coming up soon, so we're going to be doing a bit of stake practice. So we've got this beautiful scotchy there. Um, I've pretty well got my flavour profile set, but I haven't used cow cover before on a stake. Uh, I've heard really good things about it, so we're going to give that a crack today. Um, so we'll show you how to tie up your stake. Show you a bit of technique as well. I like to jackard rather than salt brine. Um, not that salt brining's bad, it's just what works for me. So we'll start by trimming up the steak and uh, then we'll season it. I like to let the rub settle in for about 45 minutes to an hour and um, then we'll tie it up. So we'll get started. So the rib cap or the spinalis is that muscle there. So that's where the judges are gonna be tasting from. So you wanna be trimming off all of that fat and silver skin on the outside. So we'll start by doing that. So having a sharp knife really helps. And you wanna get your steak nice and uniform as well. You don't wanna be taking massive wedges out and you wanna keep that nice round shape to it. Any silver skin or fat on the outside. I got two over the top today, but. I like to sort of leave that little bit of fat on the outside there because if you trim too much, the um, rib cup will sort of separate from the eye when you're cooking it. And sort of there as well, you don't want to trim too much on that point or either side of where the spinalis sits. This one was already trimmed up pretty well. So basically, Any trimmings you got. If you've got a barbecue buddy there, they can have it. So what we'll do is we'll start by jackarding it. Jackarding is just a series of needles. Uh, so you basically just pound it into the steak and um, it just helps break down any connective tissue and just tenderizes the steak really. So I don't go too over the top. It's a good quality steak, doesn't really need too much if anything, but at the same time you do need, you want something that's gonna stand out from the rest of the steak. So if you can help tenderize it by salt brining it or jackarding it, something you definitely wanna do. The steak will go back to its shape after you've jackarded it as well. So what we'll do now, is we'll give it a season. We'll do both sides in the cow cover, I usually do a different flavor on one side than I do to the other. And then whatever side has the best color, I usually stick with that for presentation. But today, just use the cow cover. It's got a beautiful orange color. It's gonna look really nice, I think. Bit of fat on the bottom there, bud. A little bit windy, so the rub's getting blown around everywhere. You wanna get all the sides, so any excess rub, just roll your steak around in. And then pick your presentation side. <clears throat> and then pour a little bit more rub on the top just so it really settles in. And you got a nice orange color on top. So all I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna get my foil tray, I'm gonna place it upside down on top of it, just so the meat sweats and starts really absorbing that um, good color and flavor. We'll leave it for about half an hour, 45. And then we'll get the acorn set up and we're going to reverse sear it. So we'll chuck the ink bird in, we'll smoke it at about 250 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to use cherry wood today from Natural Smoke 
and um, we'll smoke it until it has an internal temperature of about 110 to 115 degrees Fahrenheit and then we'll get it out, we'll give it a rest for about half an hour while we crank up the um, temperature of the acorn. When we get that to about 450 degrees Fahrenheit, we we'll chuck the grill grates in, we'll uh, test the grate temperature with our, um, we've got like a laser infrared sort of a temperature reader and um, yeah, we'll get the grill grates to about 450-500 and finish it off with a sear. So we'll come back soon. All right, so our steak's been <coughs> setting for about 45 minutes now. So you can see that color's really started to settle into the steak. Uh, I've got a piece of cherry wood ready from Natural Smoke. Got to check them guys out on Facebook and Instagram. They do awesome things for the community. They've got a huge range of wood, really good prices, and a really uh, good setup as well on their website. I think they can ship Australia wide, so check them out for all your smoking wood needs. And um, while you're there, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. And um, subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. Hit that bell notification, and then you'll get notified whenever we upload a new video. But um, as for now, it's time to tie the steak. So what I like to do is I'll basically lay a piece of string out, and then we'll stand the steak up on top. And then basically, go under, and then back through and around, and then through itself again, and then pull that tight. Then you want to put a reliance knot in the tag end so it doesn't pull through. And then, just start shaping your steak. I don't like to go too tight because you don't want to sort of ruin the shape of the steak. Just enough so it'll hold that nice round uniform sort of shape. Make sure your strings in the middle of the steak and it's not lopsided. And keep pulling it tight until you're happy. That's looking really nice and round and uniform. And then once you're happy with it, which I am now, you want to get that tag end. You just want to make a loop and then go over that reliance knot and the other knot and basically just tie, tie that off and secure it and that won't go anywhere. And then you can just snip the tags off. It's as simple as that. It's got a really nice round uniform shape that's going to look really nicely. <clears throat> so what we'll do now is when I set the acorn up, like I said, 250 Fahrenheit, we'll get the ink bird ready and uh, chuck that in and we'll get it going. So we'll come back soon all right so we're all ready to go uh smoke is up to temperature cherry wood's on everything's on our uh, steak looks absolutely perfect the uh shape that it's got is just unreal color that it's got is unreal it's going to be really good i know it already um it's got our ink bird here we'll turn that on we'll chuck that right in the center of the steak um so we want to get it in the thickest part that'll give us a most accurate reading so Go ahead. Get that on like so. You can sort of push your steak back into shape if you've sort of ruined that at all. And then literally, we just leave it until it hits an internal of about 110 to 115 degrees Fahrenheit. And then we'll get it out and we'll wrap it in foil and give it a rest for about half an hour and then we'll sear it. So reverse searing, you don't have to give the steak a rest after you've seared it because it's had a rest in between smoking and searing. So you can just basically slice it and eat it straight away after you've seared it because it's had that half an hour rest in between. Uh, we've got our infrared thermometer ready. So like I said, when we um, chuck the grill grates on, we want to get them to about 450 degrees Fahrenheit. We'll just cross-reference our uh, temperature with our instant read thermometer. Once we get to 115, 
and um, then when we're searing it, we want to get to about that 135, 140 mark for a perfect medium. That's what the um, judges will score you on at comp. So yeah, we'll um, let it go basically and just make it at 250, set our vents and come back soon when it reaches our target temperature. All right, so we've just hit 114 internal on the ink bird. You can see there. So what we're gonna do now, all that state looks good. Just gonna remove the um, thermometer. And then we will wrap the steak in our foil. It's got some our foil around the side here. So I'll be quick so I don't burn my fingers. Steaks all wrapped up. Uh, so what we can do, take our grill out. We can chuck our high heat glove on. So we're going to be removing the heat deflector, which is obviously going to be boiling hot. And then what we can do is open up our vents because we want to increase the airflow to bring the temperature of the cooker right up. Um, so what we'll do, put the grill back on. The Acorn grill has two levels. So that's sitting flush, basically with the lid. But you can drop it down a level, which is what I do when I'm cooking with grill grates. Uh, we're probably gonna use one half of the grill grates because we've only got one steak. And I'll just like to swap the grill grate in like so. Um, if you've got some sauce or something or glaze that you want to baste your steak with, it's good to get a little cast iron skillet. You've got that side free and then you can have your steak here. Um, so yeah, basically we'll give it 10-15 minutes for the steak to rest, maybe 20 minutes. And um, in that time, this should be up to temperature. And we'll uh, test the temperature of the grill grates with our little infrared thermometer. So like I said, we want to get that to about 450, 500, which is a good searing temperature where it's not going to just burn the outside of the steak. And um, just got a little bit of olive oil. I like to brush olive oil on the actual grill grates rather than on the steak. So you get that nice clean sear and um, yeah, it looks really nice on the steak as well. So it doesn't stick and create a mess on your grill grates. So let that come up to temperature and we'll come back. All right, so our steaks had a nice rest for about 15 minutes. It should allow all them juices to settle back through the meat. So we'll just check the temperature of our grill grate. It's 5.20, It's all sitting pretty even around the five, 500 to 530 mark, which is all right. And you want to be getting the uh, temperature of the actual grill itself, not the divots in the middle. That'll give you an incorrect reading. I'm pretty happy with that. So if you, when you're bringing your grill temperature up, you might have to add more charcoal if you haven't put enough in. You might have to open up your vents. Um, just for reference, so the temperature of the cooker was reading at about 350 degrees Fahrenheit, but the actual grill grates themselves, they absorb temperature really well. Um, so they were at 450. So just keep checking your temperature while your steak's resting. You don't want to bring it up too high, otherwise you're going to get nasty black marks on your steak. So start, I'll just brush a little bit of olive oil on. So you get nice clean grill marks. It's not going to stick when you try to flip it. And then, so this is my steak's presentation side. You want the spinala side down when you're serving it. Um, so I'm going to put that side down first in the uh, two o'clock and 10 o'clock position. So you get that nice crisscross mark. Um, so I'll give it 70 seconds each flip and um, 
Yeah. We'll get it happening. So we'll put this on. I like to give it a bit of pressure as well so you get a nice even coverage of the drill marks. So we're at about 20 seconds now. Um, when I'm competing, I'll uh, use a timer, but we're just doing a home cook, a bit of practice. I'm not going to be too fussed about the exact timings as long as it's around the 70 second mark. So once the 70 seconds up is up, I'm just going to rotate it. I'm not going to flip it. I'll flip it after I rotate it. And I'm going to um, rotate it down the bottom clean end so you get a nice clean crisscross. That's probably about 40 seconds now. Some people use a steak weight. That's fine too. I've only got a really heavy one, which I think overdoes it. Probably got to get a new one. It's a little bit lighter. So that's getting pretty close to the 70 second mark now. So what I'm going to do again, because I'm rotating it to the bottom side, which hasn't been oiled, quick oil, and then we're going to rotate it to the 10 o'clock position. So get your grill tools, and we'll rotate it like so. And we'll get ready to flip it in about 70 seconds and then we'll hopefully see that nice crisscross grill pattern. I like to line my uh, notches of the grill up with the actual spatula so you know it's getting pressed down in the right spot. That's probably about 30 seconds gone. I don't get too fussed about oiling and cleaning my um, grill grates on the non-presentation side. Some people will get a wire brush and make sure their um, grill grates are clean again, or if they've got a bigger uh, grill grate, for example, if I was using the other half, then you can just oil up the other half, which is already clean. So we can just give it a little bit of a clean, why not? Good thing about grill grates is you don't get flare ups. If we were doing this just on a normal uh, grill, oil would drip through onto the coals and you'd get big nasty flare ups. And can get quite dangerous. All right, so that it's ready for the flip. That's looking really good. Very happy with that. We'll just give that another 70 seconds. I don't want to press down on that side because I don't want to ruin any of the presentation. A little bit of separation from the um, eye and the spinalis. That's all right, you can't get away from that. This is what I like to start checking my internal temperature with the instant read. We've got 130 there, which is Pretty all right where we want to be. After our next rotate, we'll uh, probably shut the lid and um, we'll be right at our target temperature, I reckon. So that's almost time. Let's 
and shut the lid. And that should hopefully get us to that 135, 140 mark, which is a um, perfect medium. So we'll get the steak off after that and we'll bring it over to the cutting board and then we'll um, have a look at the doneness. So this is just about ready. So we'll come back when it's uh, at the cutting board. All right, so the steak is done. This looks absolutely awesome. So um, cut her open and uh, check for doneness. All right, so the spinalis is running around here. That's the place where the judges will eat from. And then they'll typically cut straight across here and check for doneness. So that's pretty much a perfect medium in my books. Nice warm pink center. You can see the doneness come through nicely on the sear. I think that would score pretty well. So now it's time for a taste. So that's where they'll cut from the spinalis to taste for um, flavor and texture and everything. So. That's super tender. That cow cup has got some awesome flavor. Um, very, very happy with that. Couldn't be happier. That Acorn Junior is just an absolute little beast for SCA style cooks. So yeah, I'm going to have some more of that. So that's the uh, end of the video, guys. I'm still very much an amateur myself, but I hope you've been able to take something away from it. Uh, if you could do us a huge favor, hit that thumbs up and uh, also subscribe to the channel, hit that bell notification, and then you'll get notified whenever we upload a new video or new content. Um, another way to subscribe, and I hope this works, you can click this button here, and then you'll be able to subscribe by clicking that. You might just have to create an account um, with YouTube. But apart from that, I'll link a video to some competition style ribs at the end of this one. And again, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Cheers.